Audi and BMW stopped importing the wagon versions of their mid-size sedans to America with the advent of the current generation models. Cadillac ceased production of its wagon completely with the latest CTS. Jaguar has never offered its XF wagon in the United States, and Lexus and the other players in the luxury segment have never even built mid-size wagons. Only the Mercedes-Benz class continues to offer a wagon to U.S. buyers. Blame America's unfortunate and somewhat illogical obsession with SUVs and crossovers for this near extinction. Never gonna give you up Volvo, despite the success of its recently introduced XC90, is not ready to give up on a wagon market. That's hardly surprising, as Volvo has been building wagons since the introduction of the Do-It in 1953. Wagons have always comprised a big part of Volvo sales. In the early 1970s, the company even built the 1800S, a wagon version of its only sports car, the P1800. In America, the wagons almost seem to define the brand. They appeal to drivers who wanted a safe, comfortable, and practical vehicle while displaying unostentatious affluence in other concept that seems to be in terminal decline. Volvo's commitment to this market will be demonstrated by the introduction of the 2018 V90 at some point next year. This is the wagon version of the new S90 luxury sedan that is going on sale this July. The wagon is mechanically identical, which means the same scalable product architecture SPA platform with a Kintelem front suspension, a multi-link setup in back with a transverse leaf spring and a 115.8-inch wheelbase. The styling and many of the body panels of the S90 also are shared, with the inevitable departures in the roof and after the front doors. The key dimensional differences are in length the wagon is, surprisingly, shorter by 1.2 inches, due to less rear overhang and height the wagon's extended roof line rises higher than the sedan's by 1.3 inches. The V90's additional glass and heavier rear structure add a modest 70 pounds or so to the curb weight, according to Volvo. Dang, it looks good while the S90 is handsome, the V90 looks even better, with the elongated greenhouse enhancing the new model's clean sculpting. The tail lights extend up into the dbillas, in keeping with what has become Volvo tradition, and a long character line defines the car's shoulder. The subtle, full-length through frails of an oval contour are made with fuel system mounts. Inside, the V90 looks identical to the S90, at least from the back seat forward. The handsome cockpit employs upscale materials and vertical vents called airblade, and the dash is dominated by Volvo's innovative and intelligent portrait-oriented 9.0-inch touch screen, which eliminates many buttons and knobs. Under the hood, the V90 shares the S90's powertrain. Intra-level T5 models come with front-wheel drive and a 250-horsepower version of Volvo's drive V2.0-litre turbocharged four-cylinder engine, which makes 258 lbft of torque. The T6 employs all-wheel drive and adds a supercharger in order to greatly enhance the engine's low responsiveness while bumping output to 316 horsepower and 295 lbft. Both versions use an A.N. Warner 8-speed automatic transmission that allows for full manual control. Positive impressions We briefly drove the V90 in Spain where most of the roads are even smoother than California could boast back in the days when the state still had an adequate highway maintenance budget. The V90 felt comfortable, quiet, refined, and responsive. The T6 we drove had plenty of power and the immediate responsiveness we expect from a supercharged engine. Our only dynamic criticism was the sharp increase in steering effort as you eased the wheeler center. The hard initial steering makes the car feel heavier and less wieldy than it is. Despite the large open space in the back, there's absolutely no boominess, and we'd rate the V90's cabin to be as quiet as that of the S90. The main value of the wagon, of course, is utility, and the V90 delivers, 
with about two cubic feet more carrying capacity behind the rear seat than the S90 has in its trunk and an additional 34 cubic feet when you fold the rear seat's backrest. Unfortunately, no rear-facing third-row seat is offered as it has been in previous Volvo wagons. Volvo suggests the XC90 is a better machine for those who need three rows of seating, but that thinking somewhat contradicts the wagon's role as the anti -juf. Despite this slight loss of purpose, we are delighted that Volvo is continuing its wagon heritage. We don't all have to drive SUVs, you know.